something like that. This is a philosophical moment to help some of you understand how chemistry works. If you are against some of the chemistry that we talk about or you find it offensive that we manipulate our bodies with chemistry, I think my audience doesn't. But here's some tools you can use to explain to other people like your parents and friends who are against chemistry. Leo just called my mom a drug addict and tells me that I've been taking drugs since I was a kid. My mom was obsessed with putting saffron on all her food. She's like a professional chef. She cooks with all kinds of different herbs and she was obsessed about what saffron she got and putting it on. And like every time we went to a different country, she would collect saffron from there. And now you're telling me that saffron has drugs in it that are act like an antidepressant and make us happy. And how is this not more popular other than the fact that saffron is quite expensive as an herb? Saffron's expensive. That's, that's a good place to start, actually. Well, first of all, it's not popular, I think, because most of the studies on this subject came from Iran. And Iran has sort of an insular scientific system, and maybe people in the West don't read those studies as often. I never heard, I never seen any video about this, and uh, to be honest, I never even read about it in blog posts or anything. I came across the studies when I was trying to study the serotonin system. I have a series called the Serotonergic Series. But it's funny though, you, when you said this to me, I looked it up online and the first thing I find is mainstream says, oh, 12 year old kids are getting high by taking saffron. I'm like, what? Well, I, don't, I don't know how powerful that is. But although there may it's be- It's sensationalist and exaggeration, I'm sure. Yeah, there may be some, some reason. But what I wanted to say is this. So there are like, there's at least six if I recall correctly, double-blind placebo-controlled studies, the highest level of study in humans. No, the highest level of study is a Dr. Tony Huge study. <laughs> but in humans, showing a clear uh, statistically significant impact on an antidepressant impact in humans, multiple studies with large enough numbers out of Iran showing this. How much, how much do we have to take those? Do we have to take a lot of it? I mean, the, the, the amount that they put on food, it's, you know, they're shredded red like leaves type thing, like really thin, and they just put a tiny bit on your food at expensive restaurants. Yeah, so, so maybe so it takes more that, than that. That's a good point. That's not the leaf. When you see the very tiny amounts, if you're using high quality saffron, which is expensive, my grandmother did the same thing as your mother. She used to collect it and we have it like, you wouldn't, as a kid, you wouldn't be allowed to access it because it's too expensive. But the reason why is that's taken from, in Iran, from the petal of the flower. Now, what have these supplement companies been doing abroad? I think they're, they're using the leaf of the saffron, and that's why they're dosing the saffron supplements. Like you can find one from Double Wood, for example, but the dose is like 80 milligrams. I always wondered, none of the studies support that. The studies show that you can use less, like 20 milligrams to get almost the full effect. So I wondered why, and now I realize, also there are studies showing that the leaf of the saffron plant is less effective than the petal. Now, by the way, there are many phytochemicals in this plant. It's not like there's one called CROCIN, which is very well known, but there's many others. It's not completely clear what the mechanism of is that's antidepressant mechanism, but it definitely increases growth factors in the brain, like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, the main factor that's increased by uh, SSRIs. In fact, in some comparison studies, the saffron can do as well as SSRIs in the first few months, which, which may be different in six months down the line, but it's very effective. It's a, it's, so I've been trying to tell Tony that he should come up with a product that would have saffron as its backbone. Now, there's one thing I should mention about saffron also. If you're a pregnant woman, or like, even if you're a child, you should probably not be taking this kind of dose saffron because there is a small teratogenic effect, which means it may impact DNA of a, of a child that's coming out. But anyway, so you guys have heard of like Kana, You've heard of uh, St. John's wort. The reason why nobody uses St. John's wort anymore is because it, it blocks so many enzymatic processes in the body. It could cause you to take another drug that could be double or triple the half-life now because you're taking that. I've seen this happen in my girlfriend. She took, uh, she was on antidepressants. She took St. John's wort and landed her in the psychiatric hospital. Yeah, you could get serotonin syndrome or something like that. Interestingly, my favorite SSRI also delays the enzymatic processes a lot, fluvoxamine, does this, for example, to caffeine, massive. So caffeine will become its, that's why I was so sensitive to that espresso today. I was wondering, I just got back on fluvoxamine. So, but there are alternatives to SSRIs like Kana and St. John's Wort. And then there's other uh, phytochemicals that uh, they're not known exactly how they work, like St. John's Wort or like Rhodiola, which you're showing me another thing. And, and then there's also phyto or things involved in like amino acids like lysine or taurine. Taurine also, by the way, binds to the glycine receptors, those inhibitory receptors. 
So there's a lot of ways to potentially make a sort of antidepressant supplement and a nootropic version. It's not antidepressant, but a feel-good nootropic that's sustainable, not just an acute effect, but that you would take every day. This is one of my plans for a long time to create something like that. This is a philosophical moment to help some of you understand how chemistry works. If you are against some of the chemistry that we talk about or you find it offensive that we manipulate our bodies with chemistry, I think my audience doesn't. But here's some tools you can use to explain to other people like your parents and friends who are against chemistry. When you're eating food like saffron, you're taking all kinds of different chemicals. You don't even know all the different chemicals that are in your food. They haven't even been all identified and we don't even know the impact of all these different chemicals. And then you're eating 20 different types of food and all these little drugs that are naturally in the plants are working together to create reactions that we can't even hypothesize what they're doing. When I use chemistry, I'm mindfully taking a specific chemical that I know how it works and, and what it does as best as we can at a specific dosage to experiment with it and with mindful intent of accomplishing a specific goal versus someone who's eating all kinds of different foods that's taking in drugs and doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, like taking drugs when you're mindfully doing it and you're isolating a specific drug for a specific purpose to me is a lot more intelligent than just randomly eating and putting all kinds of things in your bodies and, and going to the grocery store and buying processed food full of chemicals. Well, for me, for me, yeah, that's true also. But for me, this is a huge pet peeve, as I think you've come to realize. But for a couple of years on my channel, I've had a lot of people I respect, my subscribers, saying like, uh, okay, like tell me sartan for blood pressure, what could I do supplement-wise to match this? And there's a few problems with that, but the basic problem is this. The reason Talmasarta was created, almost all molecules that are created as medicines come from nature originally. They're modified or isolated, they're isolated then modified. Modified to make them less harmful and isolated so that you get what you're trying to get and not the other molecules. Like we were talking about in, in uh, saffron, I mean, there's dozens of active molecules there. We don't, it's complicated. If you could identify the specific phytochemical or drug that's in saffron that gives you the intended effect and you could take a clinical dosage of that excluding all of the other things in it that you don't know what it does and how they interact together you might be better off than taking basically a handful of drugs which yes. is taking the whole plant in a mega dosage because also when you are trying to isolate one chemical uh, you can go higher in the dosage yeah. with that one chemical. But now if you take a handful of saffron to get more of that one chemical you want to get, now you're getting a handful of all these other drugs that might have uh, unintended consequences and side effects and co counterindications. A, a great example is metformin. You, metformin is directly from, I think, the lily plant. Uh, it was created originally in France. You, you want to go eat all that plant matter? or like? And also, the other thing is this. Once you start relying on the plant to give you the, drug, the, the molecule, what happens is you're now uh, at the mercy of the soil in the area, which has fluctuations. You're at the mercy of the, of the, most of these companies don't test their products. So you may have a good product one year, two years down the line, they may have never tested it again. It's not standardized. It's not standardized. The active ingredient might be in the bark, but you yeah. end up eating the leaves. The leaves yeah. might have other chemicals that are not healthy to have yeah. in it. Yeah. Or, or resveratrol is another example, which is sort of turning into an isolated molecule. So you can get supplements that are isolated molecules, but again, you have to test them a lot. Yeah. It's like to naturally get resveratrol, you have to drink wine. So you're going to drink a whole bottle of wine. You'd have to, you'd have to drink not a whole bottle, by the way. It's like the dose is like you'd have to drink hundreds of bottles to get that. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really work. That Yohimbine well. is the best example ever, because if you take Yohimbi bark, you'll feel so sick because there's other alkaloids in it besides yohimbine hydrochloride. But if you take yohimbine hydrochloride by itself, you get a lot more benefit for a lot less side effects. So if you know what you're doing, the drug is safer than the herb. Natural is not safer. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely true. But I'm not in favor of pharmaceutical companies. A lot of pharmaceutical, I'm, pharmaceutical companies will take a plant and take a drug out of it. And, and if that, they can't patent that, they'll put it away, they'll hide it, they'll bury it, and then they'll go try to find something that's not as good that can be patented. But, so I, I don't like pharmaceutical companies, I like drugs. But yeah, exactly, that's, that might be, that, that might, well the thing is, I like pharmaceutical companies because they have large research departments. 
But you know, I'm, I'm a little biased in that sense. What's but, crazy is what you can do in a home lab as far as research is really amazing if we were allowed to do that and publicize it more. But the point is, so for those people that would want to get like an anti first of all, I would highly recommend you check saffron extract. You're going to get, if you order online, the, probably the leaf extract. It'll be mega dose. You only need about 20 milligrams a day. But you might want to try this. And I, I'm really interested to try it, to come up with a, a formula. Because you know, some of the nootropic companies are doing that. They're putting in things that don't have an acute effect, but should make you feel better in a couple of weeks, like Kana, for example. So my idea is it should be separated from the one that's meant to be a nootropic to make you more active and another one. So stay tuned. Be swell and swell, friends, freedom, pioneers of human evolution. A day natty is a day wasted.